morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another week of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. Now, you guys can't see it, but Luke is right here, flopped over on the floor. He's in his little, like, bare necessities pose, you know. If you saw that short of me playing bass clarinet, and he's just, like, hanging out, being really cute. Okay, now he's licking his butt. Okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, um, in today's video, I am going to give you... A few things you can be on the lookout for when you are not sure if you need a new mouthpiece or not. Uh, before we do that, I want to say thank you members, thank you channel patrons, your support means a lot. If you are not already supporting this channel and you want to support it and give this freelance musician a little bit of income, please consider joining Patreon or channel memberships. You get my channel excerpts and you also get a bunch of other cool perks like one-on-one -on -one meetings, group chats, things like that, so be sure to check it out. So let's get to it. How do we know we need a new mouthpiece? Well, the first thing that sort of um, gets me started on wondering if I need a new mouthpiece is I can never find a good reed. Now, yes, there are times of the year when reeds are just weird or whatever, they warp quickly, we whatever, but you know, you're trying different kinds of reeds and you're trying different strengths and you can't really seem to find a good one. That's one clue that you might need a new mouthpiece. The next is your tone is uneven from top to bottom. So if you're blowing a consistent stream of air and you're doing all of the things you normally do to sound good, but your sound, I mean, is a little bit weird in different registers, that's another clue. Another huge thing for me is I seem to have worse articulation. And I remember several years ago, I was at a gig and I was playing um, the hoedown from uh, uh, the what, Rodeo. And I just, you know, like normally that like was is like no problem for me, but I just couldn't sound good. It was really grunty and gross and going over the break. I just felt like I was a much less experienced player than I was. And so I, I was pretty confused. And and then I, uh, this brings me to my next point, that I examined my mouthpiece. And the next big thing you could look for is just look at your mouthpiece. Any place where the reed vibrates against, if there's a scratch or a dent or a nick or anything on it, it's going to change the way that the mouthpiece responds. And so my issue a few years ago was that my mouthpiece was just not responding because there was a tiny little scratch right down the middle of the top of it. I don't know how it got there, but I knew that I needed to get a different mouthpiece. So the other thing is um, I've had a student or two lately who seem to, um, have been complaining to me that playing their instrument is not as easy as it used to be. Um, they seem to have more bad days than good days. And I thought, well, maybe your mouthpiece needs to be replaced. And um, and sure enough, they tried um, some different mouthpieces and it was like night and day. So um, if you feel like you're just having a lot of bad days, even though you're practicing regularly and you're trying to build better habits and do new things and you know you're growing um try a different mouthpiece just to see if maybe maybe you just need a new mouthpiece um another thing that kind of sneaks its way in now you know maybe your mouthpiece is in good condition you haven't scratched it or whatever um, but over time you may find that your sound gets a little bit more thin and edgy even though the core sound is pretty good um, so you move to harder and harder and harder reads to try to get that core sound back um, so if you find that your reads are just are just you know a bit too soft and you have to start playing on harder and harder reads it's not it's probably not because you know you're doing something magically different with your air or your embouchure it is probably because your mouthpiece is getting worn out and just kind of blown out so um so try a different mouthpiece and see if your normal strength reads work um, another clue is that high range notes can be kind of wild and unruly and for me it can be hard to find like the sweet spot to place my air and the voicing. Um, it becomes harder and harder to, to get 
a note right in the pocket whenever my mouthpiece is getting worn out. So, um, so that's one thing that will kind of tip me off to know I need a new one. And then of course the last thing is that, you know, if you're doing all of this stuff and you're like, okay, well, my sound isn't as great. My articulation isn't as good as it used to be. I'm still practicing regularly. I feel like my embouchure is getting more fatigued than it used to. Just try out a different mouthpiece, even the same model, but a new one of it. And if it plays better, then get it, you know? Um, so those are my tips that you all can keep in mind whenever you are questioning whether or not to upgrade your mouthpiece. Now, I am not one of those people that will go out and get a mouthpiece refaced or whatever. Um, I I just replace my mouthpiece every, every couple of years um, whenever I start to notice any of these things kind of creep up in my playing. Um, that's how I know I need to get a new mouthpiece. But um, I usually try to switch out my mouthpieces every like two to four years. Um, so that being said, if you guys have any tips or tricks or anything you want to leave in the comments below, please do so. Um, I love to hear from all of you, of course. and. Yeah, but in the meantime, I hope that these tips and tricks help you guys out and hope you have a wonderful weekend this week, a good week next week, and as always, happy practicing.